and you became an influencer before people even knew the word influencer yeah. I, I made huge losses in right. the beginning that you own 4000 nfts yes. so could you tell me more about that and how did that happen with these 450000 subscribers that you have mm-hmm. uh, how much income have you been able to generate and i was almost bankrupt i had uh, less than 100 rupees in my bank uh, would you rather have 1 million subscribers on youtube mm-hmm. or 1 crore rupees to- Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Utkarsh, the co-founder of Cashwisery, and we are on a mission to get every single young professional to their first investment. We have a very special guest uh, with us here today. We have Akhil, uh, and Akhil is a hustler. Uh, he's a YouTuber. He's a photographer. Uh, he's a writer, um, and also right now he's a startup founder. Uh, so welcome to our channel, uh, Akhil. Uh, really Akhil. looking forward to this conversation. Uh, before we get started, guys, uh, you'll be learning some very interesting things uh, from Akhil here today. Uh, especially, you'll be learning how you can build and monetize a YouTube channel. Uh, so stay tuned for that because uh, you know content creation has become big uh, and. you can get uh, tips from someone who's grown to 450000 followers uh, all organically uh, also we have a very special giveaway that's coming um, for you later in this channel uh, you'll actually get a chance to get featured on one of akhil's uh, youtube channels for that you'll need to find the easter egg that's embedded somewhere in this episode so stay tuned to that uh, akhil welcome again uh, you've had an amazing journey so far uh, in your yeah. career Uh, but but do tell me what the early part of your car- career looked like, mm-hmm. uh, and what sort of led you to end up uh, going into so many different areas uh, early on. See, I have always been driven by passion. To be very honest, uh, I used to work with uh, Deloitte. I worked there for a couple of years, mm-hmm. and then uh, since I guess two thousand five or six, I always had this uh, a small hobby for photography. Right. But then uh, I was not able to. live into that because of uh, financial reasons i was right. not able to buy the camera but then when i was able to i slowly mo- moved into that uh, i started uh, doing uh, these daily photography things or uh, challenging myself self learning it way, way back in 2010 nice i was in hyderabad back then uh, for two years i spent every single weekend doing all these shoots learning so then i moved to photography after that because i right. wanted to live my passion for that uh, I have shot more than 500 weddings oh, in a wow. uh, span of around five to six years. Then I had uh, sort of that uh, creative block, not mm-hmm. exactly because of uh, what I had in me, mm-hmm. but then because mo- most because of the industry, how it was actually changing it to. Right. It was becoming more plastic, and I was never interested into that. Hmm. So I moved into uh, after that I moved into full time YouTube. Right. And then uh, now I have been building startups. In between, I have done a lot of other things as well whenever I had enough time. So you can say that. uh even when i was working on one freelancing thing i was parallelly working on a side gig as well right yeah. very interesting very interesting so you you're someone who's truly passionate about photography yes uh, and you sort of explored those passions in a couple of ways mm-hmm. not just in terms of your own photography wedding photography and then you became actually a content creator mm-hmm. uh so tell me how that transition was for you to become a content creator primarily do you think it contributed uh, the fact that you were into production uh-huh. uh, and the learnings from there did it help you uh, get into that See, not really, but I would some way feel that this you getting into YouTube, especially, was more of an accident, right? Uh, because uh, uh, they they used to be a video from Britain's Got Talent mm-hmm. way back in two thousand nine ten. Right. Uh, I saw that, I liked it, I downloaded that, and I re-uploaded on my channel. <laughs> right. And I forgot about it. <laughs> uh, after two months, the associated email address mm-hmm. had uh, a lot of emails wherein people were offering me fifty dollars per month, hundred dollars per month, and I was wondering for what. <laughs> then I opened the channel. I realized that had more than twenty something million views back wow. then. uh and then people wanted me to put their links website links into annotations right. and then you also used to have floating annotations back then they wanted me to put a note with the link there right and then for that they were paying me 50 to 100 dollars every month wow i used to make 1200 to 1500 every month Amazing. just by doing that uh have floating annotations maybe say seven or eight in the entire video <laughs> so this actually started working and i was wondering that actually people can make money from youtube right but then uh, to my shock after 6 or 7 months of doing that uh, that video was taken down by freemont right. uh, the media house copyright issues yes copyright issues hmm. uh, but then uh, that some way helped me in understanding what exactly this space could be like right. so i got into it with a channel which was more about apps and games mm-hmm. and then later on i moved into so i, I was actually recognized by youtube india right they reached out to me they wanted me to be the youtube ambassador for india oh, i was amazing. one from 2014 to 17 and then immediately after this channel since i was way before the time 
so i moved on to this another channel which was more on photography right. where in my uh, main intention objective was to help people with the photography literacy mm-hmm. because when two friends go for maybe say a, a travel plans mm-hmm. one would be having amazing photos the other one will be having blurry and out of frames right that was the intention nice. uh, so i thought okay let's just help people in understanding that even with the very basic phone you can take amazing photos true i worked on that objective for approximately 3 years the wow. channel name was called almost social mm-hmm. then i sense that i actually am done with the kind of content i would want to put right commercially i was not into it that was more value driven and the objective driven right then i started working on this channel which is called paisa waisa mm-hmm. uh, this was in the initial phase of lockdown right that's ag- again another objective i sensed there was a lot of misinformation scams and spams happening in the space yeah because everyone was looking for ways to make money online back then hmm. so i thought okay let's just tell people what is wrong what is not i was exposing people hmm. i had a lot of legal cases against me wow uh so this was happening and then yeah it's been approximately 4 years ever since i've been doing paisa waisa and uh, the startup even which i'm building right now it's an extension to that got it we'll we'll definitely get to your startup because that sounds super interesting uh-huh. as well uh but uh, you know going a bit deeper into your youtube journey so uh you you reached organically a subscriber base in total of about 450000 yeah. mm-hmm. right which i think in today's day and age would be every sort of aspiring content creator's dream mm-hmm. and you became an influencer before people even knew the word influencer yeah. right so uh that is f- absolutely fantastic phenomenal right uh, so uh, is there is there certain learnings certain sort of um, tips that you uh, think would be invaluable for anyone that strives to become a content creator today yeah definitely a lot of it like uh, one big reason like especially in my case is i w- i have never been into commercial stuffs when you talk about youtube right so things would be slightly different for me but then uh, for someone who actually wants to get into youtube full time they are more commercially driven uh i would definitely recommend recommend them to focus more on uh, that consistent videos right of course they will have to focus on the right video hooks mm-hmm. and then thumbnails definitely right. people normally sort of be too critical to themselves whenever it comes about any video idea right. so even when it is something too basic mm-hmm. it's always okay because especially when you are starting it has to be something which is way too basic True. because i have understood the psychologically people enjoy the content which they already know about hmm because you kind of like to agree that okay yeah you know what right. i already know about this Interesting. people love to know about all these things so in the beginning do generic videos very informational hmm. very basic and then you can also like that phase will help you in sort of being very regular at content right. and then slowly you can start developing yourself so that will be a big tip that that's a very interesting insight right because i wouldn't think of it in that direction ki aap logo ko thoda content wo do jo unko pata hai and then build on that with uh, with other content to add value on top of that right uh, i think i think ye uh, thoda school maybe jaise hota hai ki bachcho ko kuch uh, sort of syllabus relatable mm-hmm. or easy hona chahiye then from there you build up and make it harder right to keep interest uh, which is which is something that's uh, not very intuitive so so amazing that you shared that right but i think one more thing that's happening right now is that youtube or any other social media channel for that matter right it's just crowded with too much content mm-hmm. um so it's become harder and harder for people to find their niche and their place mm-hmm. um so is there something that you would recommend to people to do mm-hmm. uh, to be able to sort of um, stand out in the crowd see so one big uh, factor jo aapko alag kar sakta hai in cheezon mein is that consistency thing kyunki when you think about theek hai kafi sare creators hain who have been creating all these videos right. but can you really tell me the num- the number of channels जो रेगुलरली वीडियोज अपलोड कर रहे हैं दैट समथिंग जो बहुत बड़ा एक लैकिंग फैक्टर है पीपल डो नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दैट एक इनिशियल जो लेयर होता है ऑफ कॉम्पिटिशन दैट एग्जैक्टली इज नॉट द कॉम्पिटिशन राइट वेन यू गो डीपर दैट्स वेन यू रियलाइज की कॉम्पिटिशन है भी कि नहीं है एंड दैट्स एग्जैक्टली वो इज इज हैपनिंग एवरी वे पीपल स्टार्ट दैट और उनका कहीं ना कहीं इंटेंशन होता है कि अगर मैं एक वीक में या एक महीने में अगर मेरा कुछ एक वीडियो ब्लो अप नहीं हुआ I'll stop doing that क्योंकि right. नहीं हो रहा है दिस इज नॉट मेड फॉर मी वो इतनी जल्दी होता भी नहीं है राइट यू 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 थिंक अबाउट समथिंग आप बचपन से अपनी ग्रेजुएशन तक यू स्टडी वेरी हार्ड वाई बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू गेट अ जॉब राइट तो जब आप बारह पंद्रह साल पढ़ाई करके एक जॉब के लिए इतना सारा निकाल सकते हो तो वेन यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग सम रिजल्ट इन समथिंग एल्स नॉट जस्ट यूट्यूब इवन वेन इट्स मे बी समथिंग लाइक अ ब्लॉग और समथिंग एल्स इन लाइफ यू विल हैव टू स्पेंड टाइम ऑन इट Right. you will have to give it time you will have to just keep doing it aap apne efforts ko kahin na kahin kam karke you cannot do ki theek hai 
not working for me right so people give up too easy yes. is what the problem is yes. okay that that's very insightful but uh, just to give people uh, an idea mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is the appropriate time for people to try this because you know there's also flip side to this ki agar main isko 10 saal tak karta raha there's no results mm -hmm. right uh, then also it might not be a good thing mm -hmm. so what would you think would be a sweet spot for someone to know ki ye kaam karega ki nahi kaam karega dekho sabse pehli cheez of in if in case you start something new इट रियली इज फुलिश कि आपने अपना हंड्रेड परसेंट टाइम उसको दे दिया स्टार्टिंग से यू आर वर्किंग ऑन इट फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स और फिर आप कहीं ना कहीं उस स्टेज में अपने आप को पा रहे हैं कि ठीक है आई एम नॉट इवन एबल टू डू एनी थिंग आई एम फेलियर एंड ऑल दैट राइट वेन यू स्टार्ट समथिंग न्यू यू ऑलवेज हैव टू फील कि मेरे पास में एक्स्ट्रा टाइम कितना है सो से इफ इन केस यू लाइक टू स्पेंड टाइम विद योर फ्रेंड्स दो तीन घंटा आप आराम से घूमने जाते हो राइट तो कट ऑन टू दैट दैट समथिंग जहाँ से आप एक घंटा निकाल सकते हो आई एम नॉट सेंग ठीक है स्टॉप बींग स्टॉप मीटिंग एनी वन नेटवर्किंग इज समथिंग विच इज यूज यूज प्लस फ्रॉम माई साइड पर यू विल हैव टू टेक आउट टाइम फ्रॉम थिंग्स जो अन इम्पॉर्टेंट या फिर ऐसी चीजें जहाँ से आप थोड़ा टाइम निकाल सकते हो राइट वर्क ऑन समथिंग जहाँ पे यू कंसिडर दिस एज अ साइड हसल नॉट योर एक्चुअल रियल हसल जो फुल टाइम है स्पेशली वेन यू आर बिल्डिंग थिंग्स एन गिव इट एट लीस्ट सिक्स टू नाइन मंथ्स इवन इफ इट इज मे बी से अ ब्लॉग or a youtube channel or anything else right because that's when the initial few months will definitely be more of self critical stage wherein you are confused hmm. whether i you are made for this or not you don't even know what exactly you will have to do right and a lot of related things so negative sides mein hoti hai right after couple of months you realize ki ab theek hai mai comfort mera jo comfort level hai isme that hmm. has increased now i can start working on things mera jo speed hai that has also improved a lot right. because when i talk about my personal example of shooting a video editing and uploading initially it used to be almost a day wow now when i have to do a very generic informative video i can finish the shooting editing and everything part within 2 hours okay so that's so, so that's something you slowly build hmm. when you start working on things but right. i guess wohi cheez log kar sakte hain just give it a small portion of time like Got just it. like you invest your money You right. cannot invest the entire amount, right? Right, fantastic, and I'm I'm glad you uh, sort of quoted that example because that was precisely the example coming to my mind. Uh -huh. That when you want to try something out or when you think कहीं पे scope है, you don't need to go all in straight away. Yeah. Right. You can experiment with small amounts of time, small amounts of money, small amounts of resources. I think that that's true for anything, including mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. Right. You you don't need to sort of quit your job day one yeah. and go all in. You can do it as a side hustle. you can uh, you know uh, sort of moonlight and then see what the potential is before you jump right yeah. in so i think that's one very important takeaway for the young audiences that we are seeing here today uh, because early in your career you have more flexibility to sort of take out time from other parts of your day uh, imagine once you have a family and kids it's so much harder yes. to do that right so explore your passions now guys don't leave it for 50 plus because wo 50 pata nahi aaye bhi yeah, ki nahi true, right true. um so that's amazing and one very interesting thing that you talked about was that uh, you did um, a lot of uh, videos that were sort of exposing uh, a, a lot of people and you got a, a bunch of legal notices mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so tell me more about that how was uh, that experience and how did you deal with it uh, being an individual youtuber uh, it was scary to be very honest mm -hmm. because when i got into it i had no clue right of all these legal aspects of things mm -hmm. uh, i whatever i felt or uh, jis bhi cheez ka mere paas mein factual proof tha right. i refer to that i did my own research Mm -hmm. and then i just presented right so it was more related to online course wala platforms jo log kar rahe hain right. bettings and gambling applications that's very people, noble by the way yeah people yeah. who have been creating uh, sort of fake uh, online courses hmm. using very generic videos and hmm. then claiming it to be theirs and then selling it selling it more more into maybe say this uh mlm schemes hmm. a lot of platforms i'm pretty sure but then i really would not want to name any specific yeah. one yeah. just for uh, your betterment so i had 11 i guess 11 or 12 cases oh, wow. uh three were taken down mm -hmm. wherein uh, we were we we got the financial benefits okay uh and then there was a uh, approximately i guess four or five which we fought we won mm -hmm. okay and nice. i guess two or three are still pending wow and it will be pending oh. for life i mean and how many sure. years has it been to those cases uh, it's been i guess around five years four or five years wow yeah. that's that's crazy <laughs> yeah. but then yeah just price which you will have to pay when you want to speak the truth That's But true. then I'm glad uh, all those videos uh, have actually hit lakhs and lakhs of views. I have a lot of people. I still receive at least four or five messages on my social medias thanking me for doing those videos. So mm. that feels good. True that. Yeah. I mean, when you're truly helping people out, um, then you know, I think I think that's a sort of a burden that we have to bear. 
uh, but but I'm I'm uh, it's really amazing because it's truly something that's selfless and it's to help a bunch of people mm-hmm. out right and i think i think that's something that uh, you've been very consistent with throughout your career yeah. uh, no matter what stage you've been in you've been helping people sort of uh, uh, build their skills sort of uh, build uh, other sources of income side hustles yeah. uh, so tell me a bit more about that see uh, numerically mm-hmm. uh, i might have had more than 10000 people in last 4 years of starting paisa paisa right and all these people uh, were some way clueless on what exactly they should be learning when they, they need to get into freelancing wow skill development mein what could be the right resource they need to refer to kyunki everyone has been selling themselves as being the best correct and it becomes a problem it becomes a confusion for people to understand ki prefer kisko karna hai hmm. and then i am a huge believer of first referring to all the free available resources Agreed. then move on to the paid one especially un logo ke liye jo most of them they cannot even afford it right. like someone from tier 3 or tier 4 cities so all these people i have uh, like when i am saying 10000 plus these are uh, the ones i have gotten on a call with wow uh, for maybe say at least 10 minutes ya fir a detailed chain of emails uh, so yeah so i have been helping people and this is all pro bono i have not charged even a single penny from anyone right that's absolutely amazing again akhil i think uh, iska intangible benefit aapke uh, paas aayega right uh-huh. at some point or the other i'm sure and uh, you know that's something that like we resonate with very closely because even with the problem that we are working on uh, our focus is very simple you know teach people the basics uh, even if they don't pay us for the services uh, they should understand how to sort of uh, go and find the free resources themselves uh, how to sort of um, take any advice from even a free advisor paid advice and how do you make sense of it right so i think uh, as long as people become literate in these basic areas uh, they'll be in a place to uh, decide ki kiske liye pay karna chahiye kiske liye nahi mm-hmm. how do you go about decision making so what you're doing is extremely noble uh, and i think uh, i'm sure it's going to help out so many more people in the future and we'll definitely delve uh, more into this when we get mm-hmm. into your startup yeah. but now we're going to be talking about something that a lot of people have been waiting for right uh, considering the fact that uh, you currently have uh, 450000 plus subscribers mm-hmm. in total across your youtube channels right uh, i'm not sure how many of those are active those channels uh, but uh, could you give people an understanding of how youtube can become a source of income mm-hmm. in terms of numbers so how many subscribers would you need to have a realistic income uh, how many views on average do your videos need to get uh, to start earning a living from youtube see i could be a good example of someone who has lesser number of subscribers and i'm still i i have i used to make and i still make a lot of uh i would say x amount of money uh, than people at the same stage right say say for example if uh, uh, when, when i had something closer to 50000 subscribers on paisa waisa i used to charge maybe say for a brand sponsorship which is closer to 70 80000 per uh, integration right and people with the same uh level of the number of subscribers they used to charge something closer to 5 or 8000 wow and most of them uh some people 15 20000 but then maximum people normally convert this as something which is 10% of your views got it and this is what brands also do hmm. so uh th- this is something which more comes from the kind of value you can add to your viewers right even when i used to have maybe say 2 or 3000 viewers mm-hmm. uh, on a single video the kind of uh, trust factor which was there was mm-hmm. way much more than someone who actually is getting 20 30000 views right so the conversion for the brand was way much more higher okay very interesting i was not promoting anything which was wrong hmm. when it comes to ethical and moral grounds because i come from a very strong uh, sides of it right uh, so those were few things which was working fine for me so hmm. when it comes to this uh, earning like being able to make money from all these things yep. it again is very person specific hmm. i still know a lot of people with millions of subscribers they, they have been doing all these integrations for 5 10000 okay wow so they don't see value in that hmm. and if someone who sees value in that they are definitely making 4 5000 oh, sorry 4 5 lakhs 7 8 lakhs per integration wow that that's super interesting and i think one insight that you shared here is that uh, your audience believed in what you what you were talking about right because you always spoke the truth you always kind of uh, promoted products that were actually right for them mm-hmm. um so in that sense the brands sort of uh, had a higher conversion from them right so i think i think this is something that most people can learn that be very selective 
about uh, who you sort of what products you sponsor yeah. which companies you bring on board uh, so that's a very very interesting insight uh, so uh, and you also mentioned 10% of the views mm -hmm. so you you mentioned in INR this that means so if i would have let's say 1 lakh views on a particular video yes. that would translate to about 10000 rupees yes. uh, in earnings from yes. that video yes. uh, are you talking about the earnings that you would get from youtube's partner program or would no, it be the brand 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 part, yeah. brand sponsorships and what component would the youtube sort of partner program uh, contribution fall into this entire bucket see that again depends on the niche and the kind of videos which you have right. uh, especially when we talk about gaming or tech right. the normal cpm is very low right uh, when we talk about uh, categories like finance mm -hmm. uh, the cpm is higher right for me well, like all the other people i know in uh, this particular niche uh, luckily my cpm has always been higher right uh, like normally people have something closer to 0.2 0.3 dollars per metric right and then i used to have something closer to 2.1 dollar per thousand got it yeah. got it that's super interesting so one uh, one very interesting i'm curious about this uh, you know just to know since the time that you started youtube mm -hmm. until today with these 450000 subscribers that you have mm -hmm. uh, how much income have you been able to generate see i'll just talk about the ad revenues yeah, from sure. youtube it must have crossed 50000 for sure got it so the ad revenues and combined have been 50000 primary source of income has come from the sort of brand partnerships yes. and brand deals yes got it got it that that's really interesting and insightful akhil and thank you for sharing these details i'm sure it'll help out our users a lot um, and also uh, when it comes to your youtube career I, i would say right was there any time that you were full time into this or was yeah. it always a side hustle see when, when i was doing uh, when i started doing photography when i mentioned that i uh, sort was sort of done with this uh, uh, shooting weddings and all that because mm -hmm. of those challenges or industry changes right from 2018 uh, to i guess 21 22 uh, is when i was doing uh, youtube full time mm -hmm. and after that i started working on uh, the platform which i'm building right now got it got it and uh, when it comes to a sort of your life during that phase when you were full time in youtube uh -huh. what did your daily life look like see it was more about scrolling right uh, <laughs> reading things because uh, uh, the the video ideas like that was not the time when chat gpt was there right <laughs> so there was no help so everything was manual right. everything was what you see hmm. everything was what you feel and everything hmm. what you actually would want to share with people got it so i used to spend maximum time scrolling through things reading things reading books uh, going through articles other videos right uh, and then uh, planning for the shoots because i have never been a scripted guy hmm. uh, so i used to make all those pointers nice and then shooting editing meeting people hmm. uh, hosting events right yeah so it was more about that Got it, got it. That's super interesting. So a lot of research, basically. Yes, a lot I mean, of it. Yeah, people, yeah. people just factor in the time that is the editing time, which for you now is two hours. Mm -hmm. But the amount of background work that goes before that is a lot of time. Yeah, every day you can say around four to six hours of research. Got it. Okay. Wow. And do you still continue to do that with yes. your other? Oh, that that is like part of the habit now. Got because it. Because even when I really do not intend to create a video idea out of it, mm -hmm. I still like to read things. Right. But right. yeah, I'm less into books. Got it. Unfortunately. Got it. Got it. No, that that's super interesting, and I think I think you're you're one person that has uniquely uh, been very focused on creating side hustles for yourself, right? And uh, I think you're also someone who really believes in the concept of upskilling, mm -hmm. right? And those are the areas where you also help out your sort of followers yeah. and audiences. Um, so when it comes to your own life and building these side hustles and and all these side gigs, uh, has it been intentional or has it been accidental for you? I would say somewhere it is all. A journey which I can actually connect the dots. On. Got it. Because uh, so when I was actually working with Deloitte, uh, I was gifted a camera. That's when I could actually start shooting more. I generated my passion for photography, right. and then when I was doing it, I somewhere explored. Uh, I used to watch a lot of videos, and I was learning it, self learning it. Hmm. I explored YouTube, and then slowly I got into it. So every single thing which I have done so far, either it is because of what uh, uh, I have seen hmm. or the people I have met, right. and something which actually interested me or got or it. something which i would maybe say somewhere want to do just for uh, someone else's larger benefit right so it is all linked for me unfortunately right. yeah, sorry fortunately <laughs> got it got it and you know uh, talking in the same vein uh, how did you come across your current startup idea and could you give the audience a bit more clarity on what exactly you're building yes yeah, so uh, when i started paisa vaisa channel mm. so this has been all around skill development freelancing right uh, legit ways right so all of the hacks that you found for yes, yourself yeah everything right. so it started with me exposing people then later on i uh, went on to what exactly 
are the things which people should be doing. Right. Because I was done with sharing enough on what not to do. Right. So I started working on that. I started helping people on pro bono, like I mentioned, 10,000 plus people. But yep. then my major uh, intention was to be able to help more people. Hmm. And being able to help 10,000 people in four years, me being able to help maybe say a lack of people will take 40 years. Right. I might not live for that long. Hmm. So <laughs> I wanted to work on something which is much more uh, scalable. Right. Wherein I'm able to help lakhs and lakhs of people, not just in India, but then globally. Right. So that's when I uh, got this idea of creating a platform. Mm -hmm. Initial part was way much more manual, mm -hmm. not scalable. But right now I've been uh, building this AI SaaS platform which will help people with the skill development that will be having three USPs, structured, mm -hmm. customized, and actionable. Because right. these are three pain areas I have seen majority of those 10,000 people I've spoken to. Mm -hmm. And I still connect with a lot of people. They share the same thing. Because when they learn something, either they do not know the right resources. Right. And if they know it, they do not know how to implement that learning and start being able to make money from it. They right. have no idea about things. So yeah, mm. so that that's the gap I'm filling with the platform. That's uh, definitely a need of the hour, right? Um, and and also just a follow up question on that, yeah. because you mentioned that uh, there's, there'll be a lot of focus on customized skill development yes, and yes. then actually practically implementing yeah. the same yeah. and how you can use it to mm -hmm. create streams of income for yourself, right? So uh, just if you were to sort of generically mm -hmm. uh, give someone a template of okay, how should they go about looking for uh, side incomes for themselves, uh -huh. right? Uh, like for example, I'll give you my example. Uh, let's say. Um, uh, uh, hypothetically speaking, I'm working in a corporate. Okay. Uh, I'm someone that's interested in music, right? Uh, maybe I'm someone that's uh, interested in finance, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I'm an engineer by background, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I want to just explore, can I create some side uh, incomes for myself? Yeah, yeah. How should I go about thinking about it? Okay, see, well, like, this was hypothetical. Yeah. I'll tell you one very practical problem which people have been facing. Sure. Most of them have no clue what to do. Right. All they know is they would want to make some extra money. Kuch to karna hai. Haan, par <laughs> kya karna hai, they have no clue. Right. They do not even know ki jo ek basic bare minimum skill ho sakti hai, what are those? Right. So one bigger challenge comes there. Hmm. First, uh, like uh, when I was uh, talking to all these people, this was a small template of conversation which I used to have. Right. One, I wanted all of them to create a list of three or four things which they are interested in. Right. Something which you have to know a little bit Even if it is maybe something not too much. Right. Thoda thoda. At hmm. least you have basic ideas. Got it. You will create that list and then based on that, on every single point you have mentioned, mm -hmm. you, give the, you, you give yourself a rating. Right. Ki on a scale of maybe say knowledge level, hmm. ya fir comfort level, ya fir interest areas, mein, aap kitna rate karoge usko. Right. Once they have those ratings, uh, they will be having two options in front of them. Mm -hmm. The top two. Right. Wo aapka shortlist ho gaya. Hmm. Now you can just choose one, randomly karna hai to randomly, otherwise yep. both. And then now you know what exactly is the area you will have to develop on. Hmm. Then you will start learning more about it. Right. Once you know it, then you'll start exploring on what are the possible things you can do when you know about it. Right. Then you start start exploring on ki kya kya si possible cheese hai ya mm. log hai jinko is service ki ho sakti hai. Right. Uh, in your case, agar aap, uh, musician you wanted to be, right? Yeah, yeah. I was so, I was in my college band, but didn't go beyond that. Yeah. So <laughs> one possible, very much obvious answer is ki you can be a singer. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Har kisi ke liye it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, agar aap wo nahi ban sakte, what are the other possible things? Right. One, of course, you can actually start being on social media. Hmm. Once you be popular, of course, you can actually have brands and you can also make from ad revenues and all that. Right. That could also be a platform which you can help you to promote karne ke liye. Right. People will realize how good you are and then hmm. you will start getting calls of maybe say being booked for by pubs mm -hmm. and clubs yep. and possibly be maybe say very soon by some bands mm -hmm. and then later on you can actually have your shows as well. So, Correct. this could be just the starting. Hmm. Or you can also start teaching people because as they say, when you want to make, like the best way to make money online is to teach others on how to make money from it. Right. Yeah. So you can start making your courses, hmm. how to be a singer right. or how you can actually be maybe say, uh, like you, you you can start singing in Bollywood, right. possibly make courses, even when you are not able to do it, mm -hmm. you might be a failure for yourself, but then you could be possibly we say a right mentor for right. a lot of people who are looking for the basic piece of information. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. So multiple That's ways. Very interesting. And uh, the, the entire approach that you mentioned, it was, I think it was so logical that I think um, could be a template that every single person could mm -hmm. use to discover what their sort of next source of income might be. Yeah. Right.
Uh, here's a break from the episode, guys, because lucky you, you have found our Easter egg. Uh, and we have Akhil here who will tell you all about it. So if in case you want to be part of one of the videos which I do on my channel, all you have to do is just ask me a very interesting question which is related to skill development or freelancing or the challenges you might be facing related to this. And I will pick the best question out of it and you'll be part of the video. Um, so uh, I think we've explored a lot on the side of uh, how do you sort of build your incomes and how do you have multiple revenue streams coming in. Would love to know what your income streams are. We'll get to that. Uh -huh. uh, but before we get to that question, uh, how do you think about your own money management, right? Because ek bar income bank account mein aagaya, fir aagaya, hmm. right? Uske baad, how do you think about managing your wealth? Um, do you believe in savings? Do you believe believe in investments? And if you do, how have you gone about it so far? See, I am not someone who is way too much into finance technically, to be very honest. Right. And I'm really not someone who would want to uh, dedicate that certain percentage. Just say that 20% of your income Every should month. go into <laughs> that. Yes. I'm not someone who is into that. Right. Uh, even though I tried. Mm -hmm. But then I somewhere feel that I'm not that person. Right. Uh, I cannot be that calculative mm -hmm. in life. Right. So what I do is my... Uh, finance ideas are like pretty simple whenever mm -hmm. it is about savings. Right. Jitna save kar sakte ho, kar lo. Mm -hmm. Agar uh, kuch needs hai, wants hai, mm -hmm. I would want to focus on that as well until it is not too unnecessary. Right. I would really not want, would not want to be maybe say buy a new phone every six months. Right. That's phase. Yeah. But then uh, maybe say every couple of years mm -hmm. and if in case you would want to travel, I spend a lot of travel uh, right. on, on travel. Because I, I feel some way that helps me a lot mm. when it comes to me being uh, uh, very positive in terms of uh, uh, thinking about things, mm. learning a lot from other people. I love meeting people. Right. Uh, so that gives me some more extra insights and I'm a big foodie. Right. So that gives me the space to have extra. Same like, pinch on that. Me too. <laughs> so yeah, so so that's more or less that. Uh, so if, if I maybe say come across a possible option of me being investing, maybe say some X thing, mm. I would do more research on understanding that kaise hota hai kya hota hai kya right. possible uh, risk appetite ki zarurat hai mm -hmm. and then what could be the possible returns got it got it based on that uh, i choose karta hu because my risk appetite is way too high mm. like if i have to maybe say tell you in that finance wala not exactly the term but the yep. side of it i i still invest in crypto got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that answers the question yeah. of uh, which scale you fall under yeah. definitely adventurous uh, but i think one very important takeaway that you mentioned because i think uh, uh, maybe hamare channel pe and all the finance channels we keep so talking about so many best practices mm -hmm. right but you got to know that uh, those 20 percent figures or whatever those are they are out there because they are best practices yeah. but you need to find out what works for you personally yes. it's personal finance yes. at the end of the day yes uh, and uh, one thing that we keep telling all our clients is that bhai ye jo bhi be best practice hai, uh, it shouldn't become a stressor for you. True. Right? Uh, True. It should be something that you can aspire towards. But if you don't do it, there is no problem. Right? Because you have to think about the future. Ka to sochna hai, mm -hmm. But not by completely compromising your present. If you'll be True. miserable throughout the journey, what do you want to do with Karurpati? Kya True. Right? So maintain that balance of your present. Uh, but at the same time, uh, don't ignore your future. Yes. Right? Uh, so you also mentioned uh, that you have a certain process mm -hmm. of how you select investments and you've gotten into crypto. So could you elaborate a bit more in terms of what your current investment portfolio looks like? Yes, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, one, I invest in assets, like mm -hmm. uh, buying uh, some properties. Yep. Uh, so um, it, it mostly includes flats mm -hmm. uh, or uh, maybe say a small uh, uh, commercial property. Right. Then and I have... Do you put those out on rent? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. So some of it are on rent, the mm -hmm. ones who are uh, completed. Yeah. The one I invest on is like sort of long term, mm -hmm. we're in, uh, still under construction. Right. But then I'm pretty sure that will give me, like, if not much, then at least 2, 2.5x of right. the, the same. And then I invest in uh, SGBs, gold mm -hmm. bonds. Gold bonds, uh, yeah. Crypto, of right. course. Mm -hmm. I'm not into stocks. Right. Uh, I had chosen crypto because mm -hmm. that receptize was much more. Right. And then uh, uh, like something pretty basic as maybe say SIPs. Right. Yeah. Got it. So you do have your SIPs and yes. mutual funds going yes. on as well. Yes. Okay. If you were to just put a percentage mm -hmm. uh, to these different asset classes that you mentioned broadly, what would be the split currently? Something around 50% into properties. Property, right. Uh, 10% would be SIPs, 10% mm -hmm. would be SGPs, 30% mm -hmm. is crypto. Got it. That's super interesting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think um, a few sort of learnings for our audience here that I want to highlight. Uh, because, uh, again, a lot of people talk about what should be the ideal 
पोर्टफोलियो मिक्स यू नो किस एसेट का कितना परसेंटेज होना चाहिए राइट बट अगेन दैट कैन बी सुपर पर्सनल टू योर सेल्फ यू कैन सर्ट ऑफ डिटर्मिन वॉट वर्क फॉर यू वट डजन वर्क फॉर यू आई थिंक द टू थ्री थिंग्स दैट पीपल शुड बी कॉशियस अबाउट इज उनका रिस्क लेवल उनके रिस्क कैपिटाइट के हिसाब से विच विच यू आर डूइंग एट योर एंड राइट दूसरी चीज़ है उनको लिक्विडिटी मिले इन द शॉर्ट टर्म एंड एट द सेम टाइम दे हैव सर्टन एसेट्स दट आर ग्रोइंग फॉर द लॉन्ग टर्म टू राइट एंड अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेंट फॉर योर फाइनेंस स्पेसिफिकली इज द पैसिव इनकम कॉम्पोनेंट विच आई थिंक नॉट जस्ट फ्रॉम योर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन प्रॉपर्टी रेंटल इनकम बट यू डू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ पैसिव इनकम कमिंग फ्रॉम योर सॉट ऑफ साइड गिग्स साइड हैसल इज वेल सो आई थिंक अगेन नो नो सॉट ऑफ वन साइज फिट्स ऑल बट देर आर सॉट ऑफ थिंग्स दैट ईच पर्सन डज विद द फाइनेंसिस वे यू कैन लर्न अ थिंग और टू फ्रॉम right and mm-hmm. you can see what works for you and implement it accordingly in your case uh, one more interesting piece of trivia mm-hmm. uh, which you told me just before this podcast is that you own 4000 nfts yes. so could you tell me more about that and how did that happen so current so i would say approximately 1000 of them are sort of uh, waste right. at this point because uh, uh, the the value is way too low mm-hmm. so it started way back i would i would say uh, in 2020 21 right uh maybe say the late 20 2020s mm-hmm. uh that's when i started getting into nfts right so people suggested me to get into the ones with ethereum mm-hmm. but then i chose i i started with that yep uh i guess first few were uh, in eth mm-hmm. after that i started exploring solana right i moved into that and mm-hmm. i used to be sort of one of the fews who were actually making very good money nice. on that blockchain so a lot of nfts i even did two projects mm-hmm. of my own uh, nice. nft project uh, collection releases so very successful mm-hmm. uh, wherein everyone was actually able to make money of it nice so i have been an N- nft flipper as well right so when i got into it it was more about collecting mm-hmm. but then i realized that, that that thing is not going to work for me especially mm-hmm. in that blockchain right so i started flipping i used to buy i used to get whitelist mm-hmm. and then uh, i used to buy it and i used to flip it the same a uh, day as soon as very it would go so I used to have something closer to ten thousand earlier, and wow. then slowly sold it. Right <laughs> now, holding four thousand. Got it. And are you holding these for the long term? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Super interesting because you know again, crypto and NFTs are an asset class which is um, understood so little. Yeah. Right. People don't fully understand it. So for the sake of our audiences, I think crypto uh, with with. coins like bitcoin coming into the mainstream ethereum coming yeah. into the mainstream people have a better understanding but nft is not so much mm-hmm. for the sake of our audience could you just explain to them in very layman terms what an nft is so it's something which is intangible which you will hold right that's it like right. maybe say a digital asset digital yes. asset or digital art yes. is what i would call yes. it right you will yeah. buy it and that's mostly on blockchain got it got it and you know one disclaimer that we give to all our audiences uh, because these assets are so complicated right uh, uh, whatever you experiment with or whatever you try out with always try out with a very small pool of your money uh, so that you're able to manage your risks and you're okay to lose that pool of money yes. right only then get into it uh, i'm sure when you started off you didn't go all in your straight away crypto I, I portfolio you lose losses in right. the beginning right that i, I actually almost felt like quitting mm-hmm. but then uh, uh, just just uh, to add on to maybe say someone who is not looking to get into nfts right but still would want to make money from this space mm-hmm. they can sell the whitelist hmm yeah Call so it. people will have to dig in deeper into google and youtube to understand what is whitelisting yes how they need to get it and mm-hmm. how they can sell it right so i i, I actually made a very good amount of money almost recovered whatever i had lost right with selling whitelist mm mm-hmm. and then i got into it again right very interesting and it sort of fits into your uh, sort of creativity niche yes. right as an artist yes. uh, that's something that's right up your alley so i can imagine how it worked for you so so guys find out what works for you again that's i think the common theme True. that we are establishing True. today okay so akhil we're going to get into that question now uh, which i think a lot of people would be waiting for because you have so many different sources of income that are going on parallelly mm-hmm. right so could you give give people a clarity of how many sources of income do you have currently and if you could broadly um, sort of say what percentage of your income comes from which source at the moment including it could even be your rental income uh, if you could include that into this yes so see honestly i really do not remember to be mm-hmm. honest like all the sources because yeah. a lot of them i am pretty sure i have even uh, lost access to right. long back <laughs> so crypto could be one wherein i am not taking that uh, money out but then i am usually taking out the profits got it uh rental income could be something closer to maybe say i am not relying like, like i mentioned i am having more which are under development mm-hmm. than something which actually is ready to uh, right. because i'm uh, i'm not going to hold it to give it on rent right so it's something which i'm not looking at mm-hmm. it's it's more or less like buying and selling things got it so majority of it would come still come from youtube 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I also am into content production for some brands. Right. So that will also be part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's not part of YouTube, but then content production. Right. And then uh, uh, apart from that, I think it's it's majorly going to be the same thing. Because mm-hmm. I'm not looking at the, all the investments and everything. I'm not looking at any returns from it. Right. It's something which is long term. Mm-hmm. So this is good enough for me to be happy and right. to be having that life operational in the right way. Right. Amazing. I, my only follow up question is how do you get time to manage so many of these pillars of income that you've created for yourself? Oh, yeah. Before that, I'll mention about affiliate uh, income as well. Sure. Which yeah. is happening parallelly. Yeah. So time. See, honestly, I am not someone who would uh, prepare a calendar Mm-hmm. Or maybe see a timetable. Right. What is to do what? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm a huge believer of alarms. Right. <laughs> so that that's something pretty. I would say uh, something very awkward about mm-hmm. me that in a normal day I would run approximately thirty five to forty alarms. Wow. And then and these alarms would be like reminders for yes, certain tasks. Yes. Okay. So so it's my brain is like some way. Uh, they said there that this alarm is for this. Okay. So wow. <laughs> I, I, the, the reason I had, I, I do that is because uh, the one, the snooze one gives me 10 minutes of that relief time. Yeah. So even if I'm in the middle of something, I can always snooze it. I'll right. be having a reputation and then I can get onto it. Mm-hmm. So this is some way majorly related to maybe say researching mm-hmm. or uh, I also share a lot of uh, useful resources with a lot of people on my telegram channels as well. Right. So that again is a sort of a reminder that I need to do that. So, all of these. So that's when I do things. But then somewhere in the mind, it is all there that these are the things I definitely will have to do. Hmm. And right now, uh, it's sort of simple because uh, I have been investing almost 90% of my time onto building this platform which I'm working on. Right. So it's it sort of sort of sorted right now. Got it. Got it. And I think, I think uh, one thing that I think you need to be able to do what you're doing is passion. Yes. Uh, and I think much. every project that you've picked up, you're so deeply passionate about it that it doesn't feel like work. Yes. Right? It feels like something that you're meant to do. Uh, so I think I think that's one thing that every young person should strive for, which is uh, find that thing that sort of uh, doesn't feel like work to you. Yeah. Right? You automatically get out of bed excited to do that, True. right? And and that's something that we feel as entrepreneurs because it's, it's a hard journey, right? It's a, it's a difficult challenge that you've taken up for yourself. But uh, the fact that once you remind yourself why you're doing that, no further motivation that's is needed true. after that's that. True. Uh, so, so I'm very glad you shared this uh, because uh, I think I think uh, very unique, right? We talked to a lot of people here uh, who are startup founders who are in their jobs and careers, uh, but I think uh, the kind of sort of uh, multiple source of income that you that you've built for yourself uh, is something that a lot of people can aspire to uh, do. Okay, so uh, one thing uh, that that I want to cover here because we we've talked about all the things that that worked out right and all the things that are positive right now, mm-hmm. but I'm sure um, there have been a lot of challenges that you faced throughout your journey, right? Uh, so so could you share with the audience what are some of the biggest uh, challenges and learnings that you had through this process of being where you are today? See, learnings that definitely is something which will happen almost every day. Yeah, uh, challenges. I think the. Biggest one which I can some way feel, which uh, is very obvious, the financial challenges of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were three uh, such instances wherein I was almost bankrupt, had uh, lesser than 100 rupees in my bank account. Oh, wow. Uh, could not even tell anyone in the family because, again, comes from a small uh, mm. belief that when you are going through something, if you know you can go through it, don't share with people because right. you might not be tense. They might, they might become tense. True and that. then that their tension will reflect back to you and mm. then it'll be sort of a tense environment. So that's something which is not going to be f- good for you when it comes to recovering. Right. So I have always uh, believed in that. My goods are for everyone. My bads are only for me. Right. When it comes to maybe... But again, would definitely want to clarify mm. uh, or a strong disclaimer. Uh, this is only when you already know that you can recover yourself. Yes, absolutely. If in case you feel you need help, you mm. definitely will have to reach out to your friends and family first. 100%. And then possibly therapies or anything if in case you feel that is a need. Absolutely. Absolutely. But then uh, uh, that has always worked for me. Uh, mm. So those were the very strong challenges, especially when uh, uh, you know you will have to spend something, mm. but you don't even have it. How you will do it, managing things. Wow. Uh, but then uh, you strictly, again, do not believe in borrowing from people. Mm. So yeah, so all this was all that was part of it. Wow, that that sounds like um, a pretty difficult place to be in, uh, the way you're describing it. But uh, you know, you had the strength yeah. to sort of pull through. Um, and when when times are tough, everything seems grim around you. But always remember that uh, everything in life is temporary. Yeah, right? definitely. Because see, the only thing you will have to do is just keep making efforts. Hmm. It's not going to help you in any way. Whenever maybe say you are thinking about something, and then you're feeling that 
अब तो हो गया अब तो इसके आगे कुछ है नहीं राइट सो दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू हेल्प यू इन एनी वे जस्ट गेट ओवर इट हो गया हो गया राइट राइट सो अनदर यू नो क्वेश्चन दैट्स पॉपिंग इन माय हेड यू नो लिस्टिंग टू ऑल ऑफ दिस इज यू बीन ऑलवेज समवन दैट हैज हैड वेरिएबल सोर्स ऑफ इनकम सो आई एम श्योर इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर 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 बैंक स्टेटमेंट्स एज वेल इट्स नॉट अ लीनियर ग्राफ राइट आई एम श्योर इट्स अ बिट ऑफ अ टॉप सीटर वी सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लानिंग एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर लाइक ओके इन्वेस्ट दिस मच मंथली बट दैट परसेंटेज फॉर यू ऑल्सो कीप चेंजिंग मंथली राइट सो वॉट योर थॉट्स अबाउट दैट हाउ डू यू सॉर्ट ऑफ रिकनसाइल दिस इन योर सिचुएशन See, like I told you, like uh, again, the same beliefs that I have never been a fan of uh, putting that pressure on me of twenty percent or thirty percent going to these these things. Right. So, कभी होता है invest नहीं है do not invest. It is fine. Right. It's 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 okay. Like this is again a personal belief. But mm-hmm. then I think people can some way follow this mm-hmm. just to make sure that they are not taking it to their head. Right. कभी पैसा है तो you can invest. कभी नहीं है do not worry about it. Right. Like you mentioned. स्ट्रेस लेंगे तो इट बिकम्स सॉर्ट ऑफ दैट ऑब्लिगेशन ऑन सामने वाला कितना सेव कर रहा है दैट कुड बी अ स्टोरी ट्रू बिकॉज मोस्टली पीपल लाइक टू ब्रैग अबाउट ऑल दीज सो बिल्कुल डू नॉट रिलाय ऑन दैट किसने कितना किया दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू हेल्प यू इन एनी वे आपने कितना किया दैट इज द वन विच इज हेल्पफुल टू यू जस्ट फोकस ऑन दैट और इतना सेव करो विच इज समे लाइक यू मैं कुछ होता है जो आप इमीडिएटली यू कैन लिक्विडेट दैट इन यू कैन टेक द इमीडिएट कैश आउट कुछ ऐसी चीजें होती है जो ठीक है दैट्स फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग टर्म या इवन इफ इट इज मे बी से फाइन इट वन थाउजेंड रुपीज इन अ मंथ इट्स फाइन Yeah, do not take the burden. No, true that, and and that's one thing, especially for our younger audiences, right? Uh, we we try to tell them that early in your career, uh, when you sort of need more flexibility with your money, don't go for investments that lock your money in for a very long true. time, right? Uh, अगर आप S I P S I P भी कर रहे हो, make sure that if one or two months S I P miss हो जाती है कोई बात नहीं. अगर आप चलिए आप stock based mutual funds में कर रहे हो, वो long term investment mm. है. But अगर emergency आती है तो that should still be liquid, true, as uh, as much possible, true. right? So I think that's one. One thing that uh, you should strive for early in your career and even later on, जब आप अच्छा खासा corpus build कर लो अपने लिए, at least make sure कि 10 to 20 percent of that corpus is in a very liquid place, right? Uh, uh, instead of straight away thinking कि ये retirement के लिए, yeah. that's not practical. And I guess this is one reason वो one time or uh, annual वाला वो uh, sorry lump yeah. sum amount pay करने का जो वो option होता है, either you can pay monthly or monthly lump sum. Monthly or lump sum. Yeah. अगर आपको लगता है you are someone who makes this uneven amount of money. Yeah. जब आपको लगता है कि ठीक इस महीने दो लाख आया सो लेट्स जस्ट पुट फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इन दैट एग्जैक्टली नो ट्रू दैट सो योर डॉलर कॉस्ट एवरेजिंग डजेंट नीड टू बी लीनियर इट कैन आल्सो बी अ बिट अप एंड डाउन ओवर टाइम ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ ट्वेंटी थर्टी इज एल ऑल एवरेज आउट एंड दैट्स अ बिग रिग्रेट व्हेन यू मेंशन ओवर टाइम आई स्टिल विश 2010 11 से अगर एसआईपी स्टार्ट करता या थिंग्स वुड हैव बीन मच डिफरेंट राइट सो इट इट इज ऑलवेज गुड इवन फॉर ऑल दीस यंगर पीपल हु आर वाचिंग दिस वीडियो It is always good to maybe say invest even five hundred rupees or one thousand rupees. अपनी जो pocket money आई है उसमें से पैसा निकाल लो. But then at least save something. बिल्कुल. Absolutely. Something is always yes. better than nothing, right? And by doing that, you learn so much yes. more. Okay, Akhil. Now we have this very interesting uh, segment here today, which we call our rapid fire round. Okay. Uh, okay. It's not inspired by any show, I promise you. But am I getting a hamper? <laughs> no. No. I was going to say uh, we'll we'll figure that out offline. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Okay. Uh, startup or content creation? Startup for now. Okay. Uh, favorite AI tool? Uh, Taplio. Okay. Uh, YouTube or Instagram? YouTube. Okay. Uh, real estate or crypto? Crypto. Uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum? Ethereum. Stocks or gold? Gold. Okay. Uh, coffee or tea? Both. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, films or documentaries? Documentaries. Okay. One advice you would give to your younger self? Start early. Okay. Focus more on execution. Uh, one last question, which might uh, I need you to think a bit about this. Uh, would you rather have one million subscribers on YouTube mm-hmm. or one crore rupees today? One million subscribers any day. Got it. Got it. Fantastic. I think that's the right answer because you will make so much more money. Yes. Right. Uh, awesome, Akhil. This was uh, an absolutely insightful conversation. I'm sure our audiences learned so much from you here today. I'm glad. Uh, and and thank you for taking out the time again. If you have any burning questions about money, or would like, or have any other questions that you would uh, like to ask me or my co-founder Arpita, you can actually book a call. The link is there in the description. Uh, and of course, don't forget to like, share, uh, and subscribe, especially if you learned something new here today. Thank you again, uh, Akhil. Pleasure having you. Same here. Thank you.